Are you frustrated about losing the Afghan war? I certainly am. It seems like just yesterday, back in 2001, I could not imagine anything but victory coming out of our invasion of Afghanistan. And today it looks like uh, from a strategic, enduring peace, did we accomplish our objectives perspective that this is a loss. So what can we do about it? Well, I'm going to do a video series where I examine the Afghan war through the lens of the great military philosophers by reading uh, five theorists and apply uh, those lessons, capture them for the future. So really, what can we do about the Afghan war? At least me, nothing at this point, but I do hope that we can have a positive impact on future operations. So my name is John LeMay. I recently retired from the United States Army. And this video today is a series overview of the great military philosophers on Afghanistan. So I'll introduce my basement war room, then I'll talk a little bit about the series, the great military philosophers on Afghanistan, then my biases, and I'll conclude with some references. Okay, so let's get started. The basement war room. Right now we are standing in my basement war room, literally in my basement, and the inspiration comes first from my father. So my father was a doctor professor, uh, J. Leo LeMay. Uh, he passed about 10 years ago, but he was a professor of early American literature. And I grew up uh, surrounded by the books in his study, the books in his bedroom. And so now I have a section, just all of dad's books right here. Uh, his last book he wrote was Volume 3 uh, of the bi uh, biography of Benjamin Franklin. This is Volume 3 of a planned seven volumes. He passed right after this was published. And um, so Dad had a big influence uh, on me. Now, the other uh, doctor in the family today, or the only uh, doctor now that Dad's passed, is my sister, Caitlin May. She's written Triumph of the Dead. It's about American war memorials overseas and what their significance is. Okay, Dad study, Army Plans Vault, especially the sliding whiteboards, those are inspired by the uh, many Army Plans Vaults I served in. Some elements of this, of course, the bookshelves. I built these bookshelves and as you see them sag under the weight of the books, that's a reflection of my lack of competence in carpentry, but it was still a fun project. I built the bookshelves. And uh, I built the sliding whiteboards boards here. Um, and then on top, there's uh, army decor. A lot of things that I encountered in my uh, travels. Um, and I just want to point out, well, since we just talked about Dad, that this is his helmet liner. It looks like World War II. It's actually from the 50s. But Dad was a soldier uh, for a few years back in that era. OK, so a big element of this basement war room are the books, the study, and so what books are there? Uh, there's a couple different categories. Here behind this war board at the top is theory, then strategy, operational art, tactics. Uh, to <clears throat> the left of the whiteboard is an entire section on military history, and then behind me, leadership, and of course uh, the family section with Dad and Keith's books. If uh, you're interested in uh, a little bit more detail in the books, uh, I'm putting them into a library thing. So all the military history, the couple hundred books in that section, they've all been enter entered into library thing. You can see what they are by just searching for the basement war room or John LeMay on library thing. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there's a, a larger description of the basement war room at thebasementwarroom.com. So not only is it this physical location in my basement, but it's also a web page. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the basement war room, uh, where I'm filming this series. Now let's talk about the series itself. So the series overview, as I said, the series is the great military philosophers on the, the Afghan war. And I am going to read um, the writings of five of these philosophers. After I read them, I'm going to see you know, what what is relevant. 
does any of this explain my experience during my tours in Afghanistan? Do they help highlight or bring out uh, some useful uh, truths, lessons, principles for future conflicts? And so uh, I'll digest all that and then I'll report it to you in a video series. Bef Let me just briefly talk about the purpose. So the purpose of this is to capture lessons and principles uh, in order that we win in the future. So um, I'm very dissatisfied about the outcome of the Afghanistan war and I'm confident that we will have future counterinsurgency stability operations, etc. Future conflicts that are very similar uh, to Iraq or Afghanistan and it's important that we the United States do better when we engage in the next conflict. So that's the primary purpose. It's also to educate the American public. That's the second purpose. And I believe that a video series like this online will be more engaging for most Americans than uh, thick academic works, which are fantastic. And I have tons of them here, uh, but potentially a little bit dif more difficult to get through. So over here is a whole bunch of books that I considered doing the series on and decided not to. Um, at the end, during the references, I'll go through some of the sources where I looked uh, at various works. But on Evernote, I have a, a very, very long list of possible works that I researched and said, okay, would this help uh, guide me through thinking about the Afghan war? Uh, the most tempting of all these possibilities was the ones about the U.S. occupation of Germany. So here, at the bottom, we have General Clay. He was the commander of the occupation of Germany. Um, and so his book, uh, the Green Book, uh, so the U.S. Army official history of World War II is called the Green Books. And so soldiers um, become governors. Civil affairs, soldiers become governors is a thick, fascinating book. Yeah, just a brief glance, um, it, it looks like it has tons of applicability to Iraq and Afghanistan. So I almost went with a series that's something along the lines of uh, U.S. military occupation of Germany applied to Iraq. Uh, but I didn't. In the end, I settled on the great military philosophers. So let's talk about who we are going to talk about. First is Sun Tzu. So we'll be reading, I'll be reading Sun Tzu, and that'll be uh, the first book we go into. As you look at the chronology, he, these are roughly in chronological order. Um, by when the supposed authors lived, exactly in chronological order, but The Art of War by Sun Tzu is actually probably written a couple hundred years after he lived. So roughly chronological order. Okay, second, Thucydides, a classic, um, perhaps the father of history and real politics, and there are uh, very applicable lessons to stability operations counterinsurgency in this book. Okay, Machiavelli, the book here says Art of War. This book actually contains the Art of War and the Prince, and I am going to focus on the Prince because I think that's much more relevant to population control, uh, stability operations, occupation, winning long-term than uh, his book, The Art of War. So The Prince by Machiavelli. Okay, Clausewitz, the U.S. military's favorite theorist uh, here in two leather-bound volumes. Uh, we'll be looking at Clausewitz, and he is certainly very relevant to all war and conflict. So we'll dive into on war, but what I'm very excited about is the recently published Clausewitz on small wars. So, of course, Clausewitz uh, worked long and hard on on war, and then his uh, widow published it after his death. And, but he did a, I mean, he did a lot more than that. When he was lecturing at the Prussian War College, he gave a series of lectures on small wars, which have recently been put together and published. And this is the only book that I'll be reading for the first time in the series. I'm very excited to jump into this. Finally, Mal. Mal can be challenging from the perspective that he murdered so many people, uh, that he's killed so many people. But at the end of the day, uh, he won. He won the Chinese Civil War. 
uh, he established the Communist Party, and many argued that really the American loss in North Vietnamese, the, the North Vietnamese were just using Mao's playbook. So his writings are important, very important theorists. So we'll dive into that too. So those are the five theorists that we'll explore during this series. Okay, I've given a series overview. Now let's talk about a little bit about my biases because this is going to be a research light, but uh, but really a research light, but experience heavy uh, series. So a little bit about my biases. I'm white, male, Christian, French. So ethnicity is French. My grandfather is French Canadian, and we we'll go a little bit further back to that before we actually get to France. The most common question I get uh, when people hear LeMay is, are you related to General Curtis LeMay? And the answer is yes. Curtis is a distant cousin. Father of a one-year-old uh, boy, three-year-old daughter, and husband to my gorgeous wife, Tara. Army-wise, so I did 25 years seven months in the Army. I'm a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point where I studied electrical engineering. Thankfully, after I left the Academy, I never thought about electrons again. However, you can't spell geek without EE, and that holds true today. Infantry officer, I've served in uh, four infantry regiments, started out in 2-9 Infantry Manchus, then went to 141 Infantry Straight and Stalwart, after that 2-1 Infantry Cold Steel, and finally I finished up in 126 Infantry Blue Spaders. Staff officer, I've served as a staff officer at the brigade and division level. I've also served as a staff officer at headquarters department of the Army. I worked in strategy, plans, and policy, specifically in the stability operations division. That is probably the assignment that has impacted this series the most because my job there and the division's job there was to try and make stability operations uh, equal to offense and defense operations institutionally within the United States Army. So the Army's doctrine states that all operations are equally, or not equally, but are composed of offense, defense, and stability operations. And the Army is very good at offense and defense. And really, there's a huge shift to offense and defensive operations after the Vietnam War. Well. Uh, Afghanistan kicks off and then Iraq and then the army goes hey uh, we won both conflicts pretty quickly as far as you know the conflict with the Iraqi military but now this civil war this insurgency it's pretty sucky we need to get better at stability operations so we can handle this better and that's that's why I worked uh, that's what I worked on at the Pentagon back in the day so that that's had a pretty uh, significant influence on how I view things. Okay, I'm a graduate of the School of Advanced Military Studies. I'm also a graduate uh, of George Mason University where I got a master's degree in peace operations. That's because American universities don't study war, they only study peace, but the content was the same. So my combat tours. First was Iraq 2005 to 2006. While I was there, I served in uh, Mosul, Tikrit, and Baghdad. Next was Afghanistan, 2011, where I served in host. After that, I was in Iraq again, Baghdad, 2015, and then finally uh, Afghanistan, 2016, in Kandahar. So I mentioned uh, those because one, the series, the two Afghanistan tours will really have a major influence on what you experience during the series because I'll read the uh, the theoretical writings and say, hey, based on my experience in Afghanistan, this is how it applies to Afghanistan or doesn't. But also, uh, it's important to note that time and space have a huge impact on experience. So a brief example of that is when I was in Baghdad in Mosul, sorry, when I was in Iraq in Mosul, I, I thought we had it licked. We had the police, the army, uh, and the Iraqi civilian authority working very well together. The insurgency was on its heels. I thought we had it in the bag. But then I moved up to Baghdad and uh, got into an environment where you know, they were finding over a hundred dead bodies in the street from extrajudicial killings every night. The Civil War was kicking off. It was going down the drain 
rapidly and you know same theater same country same time two very very different experiences so experience uh, and really the character the character of a conflict can be tied closely to time and space so just be aware of that because other people uh, if you're a veteran or know a veteran they might have a very different perspective a very different uh, experience that I do and that's that's uh, absolutely uh, valid and uh, what I would expect because time and space have a lot to do with the character of a conflict okay so I talked a little bit I talked a little bit about my biases now let's go on to the references for this series so these are not the references uh, for the entire thing just for the video we're doing right now and then conclude okay so I'll actually grab them first is a guide to the study and use of military history uh, chapter three I believe it is chapter four great military historians and philosophers is uh, very useful for looking at some of the options that we could have studied and then uh, chapter 10 here had really the whole section on the occupation of Germany and the writings yeah that's where I got Joan Clay's work and whatnot so so this had a lot of the different books I considered using in the series okay masters of war uh, by professor Wilson this is primarily an online video series done by the great courses it's fantastic in this guidebook professor Wilson Wilson provides a very nice bibliography at the back listing multiple books on each of the theorists we're going to discuss so clause with Sun Tzu etc okay the challenge of command back here at the end in chapter 8 the commander is strategist so Nye does a nice introduction on the importance and strategy in the military profession and then of course he has a nice suggested reading here for the strategist that considered many of these books so those three books are really how I came up with the it's not up there anymore but the list of possibilities of which they then narrowed down to the military philosophers will actually be looking at in addition to that two uh, references are critical thinking guide and critical thinking cards uh, both are useful in just thinking about bias and how to apply uh, my experience um, professionally or maturely as I go through these books so join me in this study of the Afghan war through the lens of five of the great military philosophers I think I, I would like this to be a possession for all time this series I'm very much aware that it'll likely just be a cathartic journey for myself however even if it's only a cathartic journey uh, for me I think it'll still be valuable for you good framework to think systemically about uh, this the Afghan war if this does interest you please uh, follow and like on social media the videos will be on YouTube Facebook and LinkedIn just search for the basement war room or John LeMay on any of those mediums and you'll find it and uh, if you want a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look a little bit more detail on what's going on during the series sign up for the newsletter the newsletter is on my website at thebasementwarroom.com Thank you very much for joining me today.